Hi, IB303 development uh, team. This is Mark Lennon on Saturday, 329 at uh, 6.08 p.m. Since there seem to be a little bit of miscommunication sometimes due to our various schedules, I went ahead and created a Google document to explain what I am up to. Because I use Dragon dictation software, because I have difficulties typing, I tend to do my course development work on Word first. I've already discussed this with Brian, our designer. Additionally, if you use Google Docs, sometimes the formatting can be a pain in the neck, such as creating these tables. In any event, what I will do, Talha, is I will take the material I develop on Word and then post it into Google Docs so you can go ahead and make the edits to a, to them as you had wanted to. Okay, let me explain the assignment breakdown. First off, we're getting rid of the websites. Instead, we're going to have three country team analyses so let me look at major changes. We've eliminated the website and gotten rid of the forex. We're going to keep the country teams, and students will have to select from a list. So Talha, this addresses your concern that students will pick too many different countries. It also addresses concerns that faculty will have to know about too many countries. Considering the existing IB303 lets you pick any country you want, I think this is a major improvement. Please note, picking from a selection of countries is exactly like picking a selection of, from a selection of companies, as in Management 461, which Dr. Gottschalk approved of. So if you recall those questions I had sent earlier about for the country team website. Well now, these three sets of team analysis questions they'll be submitting on a Word document and I will provide a template for it. The next major thing I changed was the discussion boards. A major problem we have talked about is the over-reliance on specific textbooks and even specific years or versions of textbooks. The current problem with the IB303 is that it talks about case studies that are not in the more modern versions or have been moved around. If you will recall, Talha, in fall of 2013, you had to spend a great deal of time going through the course and changing page numbers. The solution is simple. Go ahead and take case studies from the World Campus or Penn State Library and give them to students. I already have several in mind from Thunderbird International Business Review. They're short, two to three, sometimes four pages that we can ask questions to the students. Next, given that it is a beginning course, I've added three quizzes. These will probably be multiple choice. Next, I've added a midterm. I agree with you, Talha, this needs to be more robust and more difficult than the current exams we have in IB303. After that, I'm adding a comprehensive final exam. Again, it'll be far more difficult than earlier exams in the IB303 course right now. Talha, I really like the videos you found. They are so much better than the things I've located. I've already talked to Brian. We're going to have a series of self-checks in each of the lessons. I think these videos will be perfect for them. If you have any particular favorites of your videos, please let me know. I've made these modifications based on everyone's feedback. 
a major concern by Dr. Godshock is the inability of adjuncts to be able to handle website technology or unfamiliarity with Penn State technology. I think this is a valid point. However, I think this topic can be revisited in a later class. Right now, I just want to get going. Finally, I think these assignments are straightforward and so the course can readily be taught by other faculty. Now let's talk about point scales. Okay, for the case study discussions, these are individual assignments. Each discussion is worth 30 points. For the quizzes, this should be a four, by the way. For the quizzes, there are three, 70 points apiece. For the midterm, 120. For the final, 250. And for the country team analyses, there's one, two, three of them, 100 points apiece, sums up to 1,000. I'll double check my math on this, but I do have an Excel spreadsheet to make any modifications. I like this breakdown though, in that it's equally distributed in how much work people are going to have to do. As you know, Talha, the current IB303 is ridiculous. You earn only one or two points for discussion posts that take students a lot of time. This is the feedback and criticism of the course I have gotten in my student evaluations. Okay, finally, let's briefly look at the new course schedule. It pretty much follows the current uh, uh, Charles Hill book, but in addition, you'll notice you'll be reading case study number one, and you'll be reading case number two, case study number three, etc. The basic order is you'll have a discussion, then you'll have a quiz, then you'll have a team analysis. A discussion, a quiz, then a team analysis. A discussion, and then a midterm, a team analysis. A discussion, a quiz, a team analysis. And then the final comprehensive exam. I have found in my 10 years of teaching that predictability of assignments increases students' comprehension. This is especially true for online courses. Given the difficulties we have had teaching these online courses this semester due to weather and other problems, I think it will be much easier to be able to modify a schedule if there are extreme weather conditions or for whatever reasons. I know this semester half my students were on the East Coast and much like me, they were without power and cable and all of these good things. By having the sequence of discussion, quiz, analysis, discussion, quiz, analysis, etc., it will be much easier to get courses back on track if you need to. Okay, team, I hope this video was helpful. I look forward to working with you. My next step is to cut and paste all the learning objectives and the course content I have for the chapters into the Google Docs. Thank you for your assistance.